Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Many of you will have seen this incredible carved monolith before, maybe on Brian Forster's channel where he has a video from 2015 filmed with a drone flying over this ancient relic of Peru. I have linked this below in the description. Some of the pictures that I've used in this video are also from Brian's website, hiddenincatours.com, also linked below. This monolith really is a hidden gem of ancient Peru, and it looks more and more incredible the closer you get to it, with an impressive level of detail. The artist certainly put a huge amount of effort into creating it, and spared no expense to include the finest details. There are more than 200 designs or individual features on this monolith, with reptiles, felines, frogs and shellfish, as well as steps, terraces, ponds, tunnels, rivers and irrigation canals. It looks like a three-dimensional stone map of some lost, mysterious place, but what that place is, nobody can know for sure. It is called the Saiwite Monolith, located in Saiwite, which is a pre-Columbian site in the southern central Peruvian region of Apurimac. Apologies if I butchered these names, but their spelling is in the description below. Archaeologists date this relic to the 15th or 16th centuries AD, making it an Inca construction. But I and many others certainly have doubts about this relatively recent age. I think it displays clear evidence of a pre-Inca civilization, Possibly the same civilization that is responsible for the enigmatic stonework we see across Peru. The main evidence to back up this claim is the type of rock, andesite, a fine-grained igneous rock which, on the most scale of hardness, is about a 7. To put that into perspective, a pen knife is about 5.5, a steel nail is about 6.5, whilst a masonry drill bit is higher at around 8.5. Quartz is roughly the same hardness as andesite, leaving only some types of garnet, topaz, corundum and diamond as the only harder natural minerals. Of course, this leaves us with a huge conundrum of how would the Inca create this intricate stonework on such a hard rock? No Inca tools harder than andesite have ever been discovered, which means that the Saiwite monolith is either created in a different era long forgotten, using ancient tools of some kind, or that its creators used some kind of stone softening technique, like applying acid, ideas that I've discussed in previous videos. I would suggest that stone softening techniques were possibly used, because in places, the rock displays the same vitreous, glassy outer surface that we also see on the interlocking stone walls. It looks more like ancient people were playing with clay, and that this rock was moulded as opposed to being cut. In fact, I would go as far as to say that this is arguably the best piece of evidence that we have that the ancient people of Peru had stoneworking technology that still eludes us to this day because although the interlocking stone walls that we see across Peru are also unexplainable, with a perfect interlocking nature, vitreous outer surfaces, and a fine grain size at the joints, the Saiwite monolith shows a truly incredible level of detail on an extremely fine scale, and all of this on a very hard piece of igneous rock. The fact is, the stone is a complete mystery. So, with this in mind, what do we actually know? Well, the name Saiwite translates to the place of orientation, meaning that you may think that this stone may be a map of the region, and we know that the ancient Peruvians did carve large blocks of stone to mimic the surrounding mountains, as seen here. But the problem with the Saiwite monolith is that it doesn't seem to match the surrounding landscape. The site of Saiwite is located on top of a terraced hill called Concacha, which was apparently once home to an enclosed sanctuary. But unlike sites like Machu Picchu, this sanctuary isn't well preserved, with only its raised platform remaining today, on which the monolith is found. The stone measures approximately 4 meters by 2 across, and scholars are not sure where the monolith was originally positioned, whether on the raised platform where it is today, somewhere else close by, or that it was brought in from afar. Because the andesite of the monolith is not local to the area, it is possible that it was brought to Saiwite from another location. It also isn't the only carved stone in the area. There is a valley below the site, which contains a group of carved boulders known as Rumi Hawasi. 
These boulders display geometric patterns, possibly steps and canals, whilst the Saiwite monolith contains far more elaborate carvings such as animals. And these carvings are certainly incredible, and you can only really appreciate them when you look at it up close on a micro scale. It is so perfectly crafted, and the level of detail is on such a small scale, that it is too incredible to be explained with ancient stone or primitive metal tools. As stated, the upper surface contains more than 200 zoomorphic and geometric figures, and experts have argued over their meaning ever since its discovery. Some say that the animals depicted have symbolic meaning, for example a feline, possibly a puma, could be depicting the ancient city of Cusco, which certainly isn't a bad idea. But with the complexity of the decoration on this monolith, interpreting one symbol out of 200 isn't good enough in my opinion. The stone has to be interpreted in its entirety, because there looks to be clear terraces, ponds, rivers and canals, and because of this I think that the Saiwite monolith is actually showing us a specific landscape, and I think that if we can match key features of this stone to specific geographical places, then we may be able to understand what we are looking at. Some say it was a model used by ancient engineers to experiment and observe the flow of water. Once they got the model working, they could implement it into the real world on a large scale. My own opinion is that this is a model of an ancient lost city, and the only way we can really find out where this city is, is by comparing the detail to the topography of Peru. But this would be an incredible, painstaking, and maybe impossible job, as we don't know a. the scale of the monolith, or b. whether this interpretation is even correct. Maybe it was a model of Saiwite itself once upon a time, or maybe it was a city much further away. If a detailed small scale topographic map of the monolith could be created, then we may be able to use computer software to overlay it on the Peruvian countryside. Maybe then we can even find a lost city. I don't know, but I certainly think that this monolith deserves a great deal more attention than it currently gets. Other bodies of thought say it could simply be some kind of water feature, like a symbolic model of the entire Inca Empire in miniature form. But again, I really think that it has to be pre-Inca, for the reasons already mentioned in this video. They say that the Inca jungle territory is marked with animals like a jaguar or a monkey, whilst places by the sea could be shown by sculptures of a pelican or a crab. Saiwite is where researchers believe the ancient people once worshipped water, if worshipped is the right word. Therefore having a water feature as a centrepiece of the sanctuary where it once stood, that the monolith once sat within, symbolising all the territories of the pre-Inca civilization, may not be too far-fetched. It is another subject completely open to debate, so with that in mind, what do you think? I'll be interested to know your observations and points of view, so please do comment your thoughts below. I just want to add a few final thoughts, not just on the Saiwite monolith, but on the great quantity of ancient ruins found across Peru. People like Ben on the amazing Uncharted X channel, and of course Brian Forster, have highlighted the fact that there are clearly multiple phases of pre-Columbian masonry across Peru. Looking at the walls in particular, and you have the incredible interlocking stones at the base, with sometimes at least two phases of building on top, with the overall quality diminishing with time. Then you sometimes see another layer of Spanish stonemasonry on top of that. The different phases can be seen very easily, even with an untrained eye, and this is the main evidence to say that the interlocking stone walls actually predate the Inca, but by how much is of course open to debate. The stone used by these pre-Inca civilizations is incredibly hard igneous rock, similar to the rock type that was used to make the Saiwite monolith. There is a clear lack of tool marks on the stones, and there is very strong evidence for an unknown type of technology, something that could be a form of geopolymer concrete, or what I think was a stone softening agent like an acid. I don't know, maybe it was both. Just like ancient Egypt, there is so much we don't know about ancient Peru, so many areas that can be researched independently, and so much we still have to learn. Thanks to channels like Brian Forster's and Uncharted X, we can all view some fantastic raw footage of these places, and many of the historic books, scientific papers and the latest research is all available to read online. But Peru is certainly a place I'll be needing to visit very soon. I have just relaunched my new channel Space and Planet, which focuses on Earth and space science news and independent scientific research from around the world. 
please subscribe now, I have left the link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.